Oh, it's, it's, it's about the Grand Masters of New York. It's about the, uh, the, 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 the great martial artists of New York that nobody really nobody knows about. Nobody know, maybe. And I noticed that, like, when we went to North Carolina mm -hmm. and we interviewed Grandmaster Victor Moore and mm -hmm. came back to New York and started doing interviews, yeah. it's like martial arts in New York had, like, a real underground yeah. type flavor. Yeah. Like, you know, it just, it just... And this is the time we live in, my brother. The European asked me, he said, what makes you a Grandmaster? My son. And my son got children. And my son's children keep going on, then they got children. To serve what that makes me. Go ahead, brothers. Go ahead, brothers. Teach it to the sellers. From the slavery, from the disguise in our office, still practicing real defense kind of stuff, you know, uh, tactical fighting and stuff. Yeah! Hey, brothers, teach it in the basement, the yard, whatever, wherever they can get it. I have to put it in context. Because in New York, during the 50s, especially the 60s and the 70s, it was such a Wild West type atmosphere. The city was neglected to the point where it was lost. Because in Brooklyn, if you don't know how to fight, <laughs> they make a woman out of you. <laughs> Break his fingers. And that lawlessness produced a particular need for people being able to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. He knew his techniques worked because he, had, he was in the South Bronx. When you walk into your car, it, it's not as easy as it might seem, you know what I mean? No telling what might happen. The martial arts in New York had a different flavor and vibe than martial arts anywhere else in the country because you really needed it here. In, in, in our community, there's very strong brothers out there, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, very strong brothers. So that produced a certain type of student, it produced a certain type of teacher. And in the 60s and the 70s, I believe you had a period in martial arts history and in black history that you never had before. In my era of the martial arts, that's when they would call the boxing rebellion. That's why they had the rooftop fights, the underground fights, the, the, the Grand Street fights, the Birch's Garden fights, you know. Um, the street fighters would come to try to test their skill with the real martial artists, you know what I mean? been running around for the past almost two years, compiling it, putting it together, talking to some of the martial artists themselves, some of their students, and uh, you know, just trying to put together a timeline and a history. We beat everyone. We had no armor at all. We beat them with them Vulcans. Uh -huh. I got pictures to show you that we beat them with, with, with Vulcans. I leave it there because that gives me memories about what I did. I mean, I went through a lot, I beat a lot of people, man. tight place, it's built, built up vertically. So you have all these black martial artists that in one way or another they know each other. And without even asking, they'll verify each other's stories. We knew each other. We were friends. No matter what, the difference. And move forward. These were martial artists. You see that picture that I showed you? I was a master because I put in the work. I was teaching and kicking 1,500 kicks a day. When you had people like uh, Dr. Moses Powell, Moe was his greatest student, and little John Davis, so was Moe's best. Them boys, woo, hoo, 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 rock and roll. <laughs> and that's that's something else that I learned that uh, one of the reasons why we don't hear about a lot of the martial artists that came out of New York back then because the the systems that they taught was so real yeah. that you didn't even you, they weren't in tournaments they right. you couldn't go into that's tournament right. because you know because the Moses didn't go to every tournament he didn't even like tournament. I always got disqualified. Sensei Ronald Duncan. This is a man who is the father of American ninjutsu, meaning that all these ninja movies and these ninja magazines and these ninja TV shows, it can be traced back to a black man. And 
the use of the weapons and, and the, 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 the improvised weapons. Give me hearts, but they're projectile weapons. Slice, cut. Things like that. You see, you know, Matt Damon fighting with a magazine. All that can be traced back to him. This is a uh, rolled up, rolled up magazine. Stop it! Take your chair. Have your chair. No, never do that again. Oh! And and what we're doing with this with this piece, the Grand Masters of New York, we're providing a bridge because these men and their students, they represent a bridge to those days that are gone.